Well, hello, fine people out there in Facebook land. I hope you're doing great. It is a lovely day. I'm looking outside here. It's a lovely day here in Las Vegas. So um, for the last three days, actually for the last four days, I've been surrounded by incredible people. Hey, Sabrina, welcome to this live broadcast. So for the last four days, I've been here in Las Vegas. Uh, the first day, uh, I held a mastermind here at the penthouse, and it was absolutely incredible. Wow, I got all kinds of people coming on. Thank you. So on, uh, let me see, it was Thursday this week, we did uh, a mastermind here at the penthouse, and we had uh, a small group of really highly dedicated and very smart entrepreneurs, and there's a lot of sharing and caring and loving and hugging and uh, sharing best practices. And then for the last three days, I've been at the Thrive event here in Las Vegas, which I really recommend you guys go to next year. I'm not sure where it'll be, it'll probably be in Los Angeles, San Diego, Orange County, or back here in Las Vegas, but it's really a great event. It's attendthrive.com, attendthrive.com. So there's three things I wanted to uh, talk with you uh, today about. Uh, something about Shanti, you know, hip hop abs and insanity, uh, about uh, being unique and dinner parties. Those are the three things we're gonna talk about. What the heck does that have to do being all put together. So, um, and by the way, what can, what do you think? Of, what do you think about the uh, the outfit here, you guys? Is it good? Are we doing all right? I'm trying to play the part here a little bit. You know, can't just wear tank tops and board shorts and stuff like that. Even if you can rock it, you shouldn't always do that. There's a time to step it up a little bit, baby. Okay. And I apologize if there's a bit of an echo because I, my microphone wasn't working. So, all right, cool feedback. <laughs> All right, so first let me tell you, um, so this event that I was at for the last three days uh, is called Thrive, Make Money Matter. Not just making money, but making it matter. Making yourself matter, and then making a, a, your money go further so you can do more, help more people, make a better, bigger impact in the world. And so I was fortunate enough to speak at this event last year in San Diego, and my topic was on cognitive biases, a heavy topic, right? But it was, I talked about how they can adversely affect your decision-making process, which doesn't allow you to always get what you want in life. So uh, there was a great lineup this year of speakers, too. Absolutely incredible. This year, who kind of closed down the show uh, was Sean T. You guys know Sean T from Beachbody, Insanity, Hip Hop Abs? Can you show me that you, you know who I'm talking about? Um, I, I knew of his stuff because we're both in the fitness industry, right? So I know what I know what he does, and I thought what he's created with Beachbody has been incredible. But I didn't really know a lot about Sean T. And uh, he came up on stage and told his story, which was really uh, dramatic. And he is an incredible speaker, by the way. I mean, he has a book coming out too, and he doesn't even know, Sean doesn't know I'm, I'm saying this about him, but. Um, I was thoroughly impressed. He has a new book coming out. I forget the name of the title of it, but it comes out in October. So I'm going to suggest you get it because it's related to his topic he said today. But um, let me tell you something that was great as a, from a presentation skill. If you're ever going to do presentations for people, Sean T did such a great job because he actually did in, impromptu uh, dance lessons adding to a storyline and he progressed the dance moves based on the storyline of his presentation. He got the crowd moving and then he opened a loop and then he danced some more and then he closed out with his story and they did some Q&A in the end. But um, it was just a brilliant, so it, I, I just have to give him props because it was so great. And normally I don't just go, woo, this is great. You know, this is, this is awesome. Um, another thing I'll just tell you real quick, a lot of you guys that are online a lot and no social media know of Ty Lopez. And so last, last year, I was on stage right before Ty was, and um, I imitated him on stage, but he was actually up in his, his room getting ready before he came on stage, but he didn't see it. But uh, so I didn't get a chance to, I wasn't on stage this year, so I didn't get a chance to do that again, but it was, it was hysterical from what I'm told. Um, but what, what's interesting about him, people either love him or hate him, but here's the reality, if, if you guys don't know what he does. He literally makes tens of millions of dollars a year. True story. A lot of people say, hey, I'm here in my garage. I've got my Lamborghini. Right? He does this thing. All, he rents all the cars. He rents all the houses. But he has like 12 cars and five houses. And his lifestyle costs him about a million dollars a month. And he's killing it with one of his businesses that does just one business, does $50,000 a day, a day, which he spends about five minutes a day on. Not a joke. But what he does, he has these enormous bodyguards that follow him around. Because people do mob him, which is crazy because he's just – 
a, a, an online reality star. Uh, but it plays up into his persona too. So it's actually brilliant marketing on his part. But what people don't know, I guess, or, and maybe should know, is that his show is called The Ty Lopez Show. It's actually a show, but he has so much of a following on all his platforms and stuff like that. He actually has about twice the audience of the Kardashians. And all of his social media fo following is like all, greater than all the top people in our industry combined. And he's only been doing it for like seven years or less than that, five years. It's really impressive. So sometimes you got to play the part, but then you got to back it up. And he does both. So I'm just telling you about two of the people that were in, in our group that have done really, really interesting things. Grant Cardone was there as well. And uh, Jordan Harbinger of the Art of Charm podcast, one of the top podcasts in all of iTunes. I think he does more than uh, Joe Rogan uh, podcast. And he was there as the MC. Great people. So anyway. Quick sidebar, attendthrive.com. My buddy Cole Hatter puts it on. Incredible event, a thousand people, okay? So there you go. Hey, Kevin Stimson, uh, let me know what's up for later, okay? Uh, so here, here's here's my notes, you guys. So um, number one, Shanti was incredible, super impressed with him. But here's his message that he said. He, he, he said uh, that he learned that he had sold $1 billion of product online, one billion with a B. And that's his Insanity series and his hip hop abs and I think he has some other stuff as well, but one billion dollars. And when he learned that, he goes, huh, I didn't know that. And it didn't affect him because he'd already made a lot of money. Believe me, Beachbody makes a lot more than him, but he still does very well, he's, he's set. But he says, this is what his quote was, it's not about the money, I just wanna feel good. And I'm paraphrasing, I'm trying to remember his exact, his exact words, but I just wanna feel good. So it's kind of an interesting perspective. There's someone who has sold a billion dollars on TV. He's probably made 10 or $20 million himself, I'm guessing. I don't know what, what his take is, but I'm guessing. Um, but, and that set him up for life, which is awesome. But he says he wants to feel good. And he went back, and this relates to a story of, uh, uh, as a young boy. He just wanted to teach dance classes, and he didn't care about anything else. He just wanted to feel good and make other people happy. So my question to you related to Sean T's story is in your pursuit of the numbers, is what he was talking about too, are you losing sight of the joy along the way? Because if you do that, or if you allow that to happen, I should say, that's a better way of phrasing it, if you allow that to happen, or if you're cognizant of that transition from about chasing the numbers instead of doing it for the joy, you need to reel yourself back in and readjust. Um, because, uh, there's, there's a saying that, uh, that uh, if you help enough people get what they want, you'll get what you want. And there really is a lot of truth to that. But in that pursuit of doing that, you have to have joy along the way. We all like monetary things. If you say you don't, you're not being honest, okay? And we like different things for different reasons. I'm in a $4 million penthouse on the Las Vegas Strip. I'm not gonna lie and say I don't like this. This is awesome. I'm super grateful, okay? I've worked my ass off my whole life and I like this a lot, okay? But I can't chase the numbers. I can't chase the numbers. And by the way, the only reason I know that is because I just got appraised. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know that number. The point is that it is the, the challenge and the pursuit and the joy of creating something beautiful and then sharing it with my friends, like Kevin, if you guys are gonna come over later. <laughs> so, that's what makes you happy. And you have to keep that in mind. It's okay to be aware of the numbers, but when you chase the numbers, and that's all it is, and that's all it becomes, you, you don't have as much fun. But if someone tells you money doesn't matter, they're not being honest. Go a month without any money. Go to the movies without any money. Unless you got a gift certificate, right? Okay, well then try to buy some M&Ms. Not gonna work. That'll cost 50 bucks. Try to put gas in your car with no money. Go on a luxury vacation with no money. Put your kids in a good school without any money. Put a roof over your head without any money. Give to your charity, your church, your synagogue, whatever it is, without any money. You're not gonna be able to do it. So don't say that money doesn't matter or money is evil and crap, it's nonsense. You need to be aware of it, you need to grow it, you need to nurture it, you need to protect it, and you need to do good with it as well. But you can't chase that number you have to be in the service of other people. And remember what Sean said, I have my notes here. It's, he didn't do it for the money, I just wanted to feel good. So if you lose track of feeling good along the way, reel it back in. And I have to do that all the time too. Here, here's the thing you guys, <coughs> excuse me. 
whenever I'm sharing something with you, it's not because I think I'm above it or beyond it or excluded from it. I'm telling you these things because I'm working on my own shit and I'm sharing it with you because I think it's really important. And when I have an epiphany, uh, a, a, a knowledge bomb dropped on me, or like, like uh, Sean T's message today when he spoke, I just thought it was really, really profound. And it kind of re re reels you back in. You gotta have fun. There's a lot of people at this event, <coughs> I swear I'm okay. There's a lot of people at this event that had corporate jobs, and they might be making two or three hundred thousand dollars a year, which is like four to six times more than the national average for household income, something like that. And they're miserable. They hate their life. They hate their jobs. People are crying. Not all of them, but some of them. And it's because they lost the joy. They lost the passion. They were chasing the money based on perhaps someone else's dream or expectation of what they should have been doing instead of doing what feels good because they didn't want to disappoint their family or their friends or their family's legacy or whatever. Well, that's a bunch of crap. It's your life. And we're only here one time unless you believe in reincarnation. That's cool if you do. But for a lot of people, we're just here once. We got we to do it right. And we got to make the most of it. And we have to have a lot of good life lessons that, we, that uh, make us grow as an individual so we can make a bigger, more positive impact in the world. And if you only chase the numbers, it makes it more difficult. But when you do it from the heart to serve as many people as possible, to have a moonshot, something uh, that is profound, that, that fundamentally changes the world for the better, the more impact you have on more people, you will be rewarded with a lot of numbers, with a lot of zeros to the left of the decimal point, right? Okay, so that's number one. And by the way, buy, buy Sean T's book coming out. Anyway, I, can't, I can't express enough, he was fantastic. So I didn't really know him a lot before, but I'm a fan, okay? Um, and then, Another thing that he said, but many other the other speakers said, and, and I've said this a lot to, to when I'm on stage or speaking to people, is be unique. There's only one you. When you see someone do something like that, like, you know, there's Ty Lopez there and Grant Cardone, and Sean T was great, and um, I'm just trying to think of some of the other speakers. Really successful people, people doing, you know, $100 million a year. Uh, a, a gentleman I spoke to actually on the phone about a month ago, um, he, he is going to the moon uh, with his space agency in October, or November, no, December, he's the only authorized person to go to the moon by the U.S. government, and he's going in December. And I had an hour-long conversation with him. And he's also doing some life extension stuff that is going to extend the human life by 20 years. He came to the United States from India with zero dollars, not speaking the language, and now he's made $8 billion. He has two multi-billion dollar companies, and he's going to the moon. That's the truth. I will put some information in the comments later. So, but he's not chasing the numbers. He wants to profoundly impact the world and the people for the better. And, and so that's, so he's, it's just incredible, okay? He's being unique. He's not trying to be like everyone else. There's only one you. That's what I was getting back to. There's only one you. What happens is people see these people doing great things and doing big things, like they got someone in the fitness industry or someone in the coaching industry or some, you know, you see like Elon Musk doing great things or Bezos with Amazon. You're like, oh, I want to be them. I want to do that. He's already taken. There's already a Jeff Bezos. There's already a Mark Cuban. Uh, there's already a LeBron James. It's all, all that stuff's gone. Uh, Laurie Grenier. All those people are already taken. So you have to be you. But how can you be the best version of you? By not chasing the numbers, by being the service of people, other people, as many people as possible, helping them get what they want so you get what you want. The numbers will come. And what, what every time that we have an event like this, and, or I have an event, or I'm speaking on stage or doing coaching or whatever, the biggest thing that tends to hold people back is what they believe is possible. It's always what they believe is possible. And there's only two things that will really hold you back in life. And, and that is what you believe is possible and your willingness to do the hard work because nothing great happens in your comfort zone. I said this just a minute ago in my private group. I'm going to repeat it here. Nothing great happens in your comfort zone. Your growth, your exponential growth, your greatness, the, the major contributions you make to the world never happen when you're in your comfort zone. If you run a marathon, were you comfortable? No, I hurt like hell. But now you're a marathoner. 
if you, if, I, I did the Iron Man years ago. People do the Iron Man. It's an incredible amount of suffering. But then you're an Iron Man. And you were, you were barely in your comfort zone. Pro probably just enough so you didn't blow up, right? And then there are times when you were far outside your comfort zone. But you're able to keep going because you're able to do far more. If you're in your comfort zone and you stay within the confines of your current normal, you probably won't reach all the goals you want. And I learned this, and I said this before, but you know, there's certain things that bear repeating because it's such a good lesson. I learned this from my friend Jesse Elder. He says, you have to have or find or create a new normal. If, you're, if your current normal does not challenge you, if your current normal surrounding of friends does not challenge you, if your current normal of physicality, intimacy, relationships, uh, family, whatever, is not nurturing to you and doesn't challenge you to become a better person, then your, your normal is not enough to make you a better, more well-rounded person who can make a bigger contribution to the world, personally, professionally, financially, philanthropically. Right? It just, you just don't do that if you're comfortable. Because that means you're sitting your ass on your couch and you're really not doing anything. And you're helping Netflix uh, because you're, you're, you're adding data to them so they know what to suggest for you next. But that's about it, right? Um, Michael, uh, your new place that looks fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate that. My wife actually did all this. I did, I did not design this. I am colorblind and she, uh, hopefully, uh, this all matches. Otherwise, she's going to give me a ration of crap. Uh, yes, probably the beliefs define the boundaries. Yes, your beliefs do define your boundaries. Your beliefs create your reality. And your reality is only what you believe. What, what, what's the saying? Uh, is that life is 10% of what happens and 90% how you respond to it? Something like that. There's different ways of phrasing it. But it's really, really true. Uh, thank you for joining us, John. So, recapping real quick. I was just talking about Sean T. Buy his new book. Great speaker. Remember, he says, don't do it for the money. I just want to feel good. So make sure you're feeling good as you're, you're going after your financial and personal and professional pursuits. And then be unique. There's only one you. You know, you don't need to be another star, another celebrity. There are certain things that you have that are intangible and irreplaceable and can't be rubber stamped somewhere else. You have unique qualities, attributes, experiences that no one else has. But if you're not allowing that to shine, and you're not sharing that with people, that's a huge disservice. And if you're unsure of what your gifts are, as my friend Jim Quick says, your superpowers, because we all have superpowers, if you're not sure what they are, why don't you ask people around you that you know, love, and trust to be authentic and true to you and be honest with you and ask them what they think your strengths are and what your superpowers are, because you have them. We all do. We all do. Okay? And then finally, here's the last thing I want you to think about. And we've said this before as well, bears repeating. You are the average of the five people you spend most of your time with. You just are. If you have five friends that sit around and smoke pot all day, guaranteed you sit around and smoke pot all day. If you have five friends that work out at least five days a week, you're going to be working out probably close to five days a week. If you have five friends and they're all millionaires, you're probably also a millionaire. If you have five friends that go in vacation, you're, the people you spend most of your time with, uh, travel around the world a lot, you're probably traveling around the world a lot as well. You relegate down to the mean, the norm, the average of the people you're around most often. So who are those people? Who are they? Think about it, just be honest just for a second. Even if it hurts your feelings, just be honest. Um, hey, Steven, how's it going? Think about the people that you're with. You are, you, you kind of mold to this norm of the people you hang out with. You probably watch the same sports, you talk about the same teams, um, you, you go to the same events, you might like the same kind of movies or whatever. If that isn't exciting you, if it's not adding value to your life, it is not making you a better person so you can make a bigger impact in the world, so you can feel good as you make a bigger impact, then you're hanging out with the wrong people. Knock it off. But here's what you can do. So here's the third thing. Have dinner parties. What? Yes, just dinner parties. That's what I'm talking about. So think about this. You can do this. They do like rotating dinner parties just for fun. You know, a lot of, a lot of times people will get together and they'll 
have couples or whatever, or single people or mixers or whatever, and it, it rotates. Like one month it's at someone's house, next month at someone else's house, or you do it like the second and fourth uh, Thursday of the month or something like that. And you have maybe 10 people in your group or eight or whatever the size is that will always fit at everyone's table, right? And you have a dinner party, but it's for peer support and idea sharing and reflection, feedback, right? And it doesn't have to be formal. It's not anything you charge for. Maybe maybe just everyone pitches in like 20 bucks to help pay for the food or something like that. I mean, that's fine. You do whatever you agree upon. But it doesn't have to be formal. It's not a mastermind. It's a dinner party. But rather than just sitting there and drinking eight bottles of wine and talking about stupid crap, why don't you have two or three bottles of wine, or none at all if you choose, and talk about things that really matter and how you're going to make a difference and how you're going to support each other and how you can make a difference in your community and the world and how you can grow your businesses and how can you have better relationships and where can you go travel and how can you make an impact for people who are less fortunate. There's a lot of people who are just lazy, right? But there's a lot of people who are less fortunate, like uh, the people who were in, in the Caribbean who are struggling through this last hurricane. They're not lazy people. I don't know, there might be some, but they just were incredibly unfortunate and something horrible happened. How can you help those kind of people, right? Um, so that's what you can do as a group, too. Is you can do philanthropy. You can do business. You can do spiritual development, personal development, relationship development. You, not everyone has to be a guru, expert, authority, or something like that. But you can share books, too. Hey, I read a great book, like the one we were talking about, uh, in, actually, in my, in my group, The One Thing. It's a great book, how to focus on the one thing. Um, there's a great book by my friend John Asaraf called The Answer. Uh, another book uh, by another friend of mine, T. Harv Ecker, The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Great book. Um, and there's some uh, great books by Eckhart Tolle. So a lot of, you know, you can choose whatever you like. But you can do almost like a, a book sharing dinner party as well. And you all get together. It doesn't have to be formal. But there should be some expectations. And there should be some desired outcomes. And there should be some sense of formality in the sense of that you do it once a month, once a quarter, once a week, or once every other week, whatever it is. And you can rotate uh, houses and where you do it. You can do it in your community. Uh, we're going to start doing some here. And then uh, another house in Southern California, uh, in Orange County, one in San Diego. And I think they want to do one in Phoenix, too. And do a rotating party in different areas like that, like once a quarter. But we're going to do some more things here at the penthouse as well. So um, that's it. I know I kind of, this was way more long-winded than I thought it was. But I hope it was helpful to you. Uh, oh, do I, <laughs> do I, do you? Do, uh, did you call me average? That's mean. I uh, I know you're being facetious. Um, I don't I don't know if you're average. Um, it, it, the average of who? The average of what? Um, here's what I can tell you. Okay. Who do you really admire? And and I'm not saying I'm not. I'm not saying this about you. Who who do you? Because because I know you're just being silly. Who do you really admire? That's average. Who can you say, man, you know what? I aspire to be them because they're average. And they really inspire me because they fit right in the middle. And I'm totally motivated by them because they totally blend in. That doesn't happen, right? That never happens. The people that you admire or aspire to be like or want to emulate even though you're being yourself, right? But you can emulate certain traits or attributes or, or qualities or characters or characteristics, I should say. There are people who aren't the norm. They're not the average. They don't blend in. Um, they don't settle for mediocrity. Um, they are willing to do more, become more, live more, share more, give more than other people. And they put themselves out there more and are willing to take more risks. But here's the difference. You have to take calculated risks. You have to be strategic with your risks. You don't, I, well, I was just going to think of, of, of a parachuting analogy and it's not going to work out. So I will leave that one there. But you, you have, I wouldn't, I, I, for me personally, that risk for skydiving, that is one I, I won't take because if you screw up, you're dead. Uh, there's a lot of other risks where you might break your wrist or cut yourself. 
But I, again, that's a calculated risk. I personally would not take is skydiving. Not going to happen. Um, so that's it, you guys. Thank you so much. Again, if you're interested in the event uh, next year, attend thrive.com. Really, really great. A, a bad dad joke? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. Let me know how I can help you. Okay. I have a, a new coaching program coming out real soon. Um, it's going to be for some high level coaching for people who really want to make the most of their life in their, their personal pursuits and their personal development pursuits, uh, with their relationships and their finances and their business. So, uh, that's coming up very, very soon. So keep an eye out for that. I have some new stuff coming up. Okay. Please let me know how I can best serve you. All right. Have a, have a wonderful evening. Uh, it's beautiful here. I hope it's beautiful wherever you're at as well. Okay. Thanks a lot.